everyone, it's Jeff May. I am joined by artist and teacher, Peter Santamaria. Peter, you did this wonderful piece here. Guilty. I brought you, I dragged you on here to talk about it. And I want to talk about this because you've got so, you've given me so many treats here. Uh, and, and I want to talk, I want to discuss this amazing piece that you have right here that Let's you brought in. Uh, and, and the, first and foremost, uh, how did you get into this style of printmaking? Well, uh, this, this, am I looking at you the whole time? You can look wherever you want. You're allowed to do whatever you want. I want to make want. sure every camera gets a little bit so we can, then you guys can splice it together later. You can um, give it wherever, wherever you want. Super producer Sam saying, Sam you look Cam, right over here. Got it. So, uh, this style of artwork is called printmaking. So, um, that's like a big umbrella term, it's like saying drawing. So this specific type of printmaking, uh, I carve sheets of linoleum. Uh, so this is like the raw material linoleum. It's sometimes like a leathery surface or a rubbery surface. I draw the design right onto it. I carve it out. I use these really fancy tools. Yeah, those They're look super are, sharp. Those are fascinating and terrifying at the same right? time. And then uh, I carve an image out and I roll ink on that. You want to hold the roller now when I say roll? Hold there you go. Roll, <laughs> ink. Roll ink, there you go. And then so I uh, apply those materials on and I create like what's like a large stamp, large stamp. And uh, then I put the paper on. This is like a handmade paper that I import from Nepal. It's called Lakta. Yeah, you're doing a great job. You know what? I feel like I'm doing Good. a great job. You. Thank you. And uh, so each stamp then it becomes a print. So each person who Purchases a print gets a handmade original. So you did that. I made that. So not like a printer, like a no, no, no. Well, no I guess all... you're technically a printer. yeah, exactly. I'm a printer in a traditional sense, yeah. So what I have here right Go now, ahead. and this is really cool. I didn't know you were going to bring this. Eh, full of surprises. I'm like a like a crafty Santa Claus. Uh, I like I like you have that Santa beard too. Oh, this is the actual carving. It is. That you run the ink over yes. and then you press down. Exactly. And we take a look at that. I'm going to just kind of lean back a little bit. Look at the way the light hits that. Isn't that something? This is so cool. It's like and a dolphin skin. It's kind of heavy. Is, it is that how we... <laughs> That's how we make Dolphin them. skin? That's the sad truth. You are from you Miami, huh? Yeah, exactly. Uh, look at that, though. That is such a cool piece. And I look forward to not destroying it. <laughs> so I'm going to put it down. So everything is carved in reverse. And because when you make a print, it's a mirror image. So the only thing you have to think about when you're designing this way as opposed to a drawing is to think in reverse of what you want the final image to look like. Oh, yeah. oh that's fascinating, so you work, especially with lettering. Right, especially I mean, with lettering. You work yeah. with lettering here. Yes, uh, yeah. There's a Japanese uh, text there. What's that say? So was, that's that, after all the approval, we've determined it says Spider-Man. That would have been great if it was just something random. It could it have been. Just, Google like, Translate. That dogs. That's Google Translates, <laughs> like nefarious ploy to uh, destroy what, relations. What's your artistic background? So how did you, how do you get, uh, where do you start versus how you end up here? Like, you know, I, I've always, you know, like anybody, I've always drawn and I've always been into making stuff, you know, if you end up this way. But um, printmaking was something that I actually got into as a teacher, because I teach art as well. And uh, I took it, you know, I took courses in university. Some people who take uh, art in university, you'll take printmaking as a course. But I didn't think of it as a, a way to get into this world. Because uh, it has this, it just, it, it's not very popular in mainstream production. So you tend to, when you're coming up, you start thinking about, well, let me see what everybody else is doing and how can I get into that. And as a teacher, you start working with different materials and printmaking was, like everybody's favorite for my students. They were, my, they were like their favorite project to work on because there's so much process. You carve a little bit. Seems very hands-on too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you are the means of production, which is what led me to realize this is where I should be. Because I before I was painting, I was doing some digital stuff, um, and then I always had to involve a third party, whether it was you know a printer, a photographer, to get my multiples for a show and to sell. But because I'm the means of production, like I said, I'm in control of the timetable. I can make as many or as little as I want. I don't need to rely on anybody else. That's really yeah. rad. That's and and so what I've noticed and, and something because I, I I follow you on the gram. You he's Thank a you. fun follow. I follow you back. Uh, listen, that means so much. I'm normally say I'm no follow back girl, but he's you're a you're, and what I've noticed uh, uh, from their posts and from a lot of the art that you have posted and the stuff that that we've done here, um, you're a big pop culture guy. I love it. Uh, and you like to incorporate a lot of pop culture into your pieces. I love it. Um, are there any franchises that you really like, that are your favorite, that you that you chase, that you want to do, yeah. that you... Uh, what are your yeah. favorites? Yeah. I mean, I have so many, so many fans, but I always go back to Hellboy, 
and Godzilla, Kaiju, Gamera, stuff like that. Uh, Hellboy is actually how I discovered Sideshow. Really? Yeah, because I, I went to Comic-Con in 2002, um, and I didn't know Sideshow. I didn't know much. I was 19, and the Sideshow booth even then was the single best booth at Comic-Con, which I don't think is even arguable for debate. And you had just announced, the company had just announced all the Hellboy merchandise for the first film with Guillermo del Toro. Oh, cool. And it blew my mind. Because before that, Hellboy wasn't very merchandise. It yeah, it was product. pretty minimal. Yeah. And so I saw, I'm like, what? Like from zero to 60, right? So I was just started working my first full-time gig, still living at home. And I'm like, oh, 800 bucks on my paycheck. I'm rich. And I literally went on when they announced the merch. And I went nuts. I went, bought it, bought it. I pre-ordered everything. I had the hand, the gun. The, had it all. You went nuts. Yeah, that's how I'm like, I'm like, sideshow, this is the mecca for getting cool stuff. So thank God you got this when you're working Right, with now us I get a 10% now. discount. Now you can just exactly. grab some of this right. stuff on the way out. Right, right, yeah, right. Notices. Yeah. I'm so small, I can't smuggle anything well. You can figure yeah, it out. Exactly. I brought a backpack. But uh, the, the idea is that um, those are the, the, the licenses that keep calling back to me. Hellboy, uh, I'd love to work at some point. Mignola's difficult to get his approval. I get like a weird um, like paternal vibe. I love him so much. He's yeah. the, the single biggest influence I've had as an artist, easily. You chase him down when you go to cons? I'm too scared to. I, I always try to have a reason to talk to him. You know what I'm saying? He gives me like a Larry David vibe. Yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, can we talk about this? Uh, you can cut it out later if you don't want to. But I love this guy <laughs> so every much. Every time in an interview, yeah. like when somebody goes, we can cut this out if you don't want I'm like, this is going to get great. Yeah, right? I'm just saying I love, I love the art, but so many artists. I've had the fortune in the last couple years to meet so many of my influences. Yes. And they're all they've all been very respect, receptive and I've been so grateful for that because yeah. it's it's something where when I came to Comic-Con 2002, I met all these people who inspired me so greatly that one of my biggest goals was to come back at some point to show them that I'm worthy of being on the floor with them, hopefully, right? And it took me till this past Comic-Con to get into Comic-Con. And oh, cool. when I finally did the first thing that I did was I went to find certain artists like Scott Morse. He's a Pixar artist. He's okay. an amazing painter and illustrator. Eric Powell, who uh, created The, the Goon. Goon. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, Mike Mignola. And so many of these artists that inspired me, I want to say, dude, I've been, like, for the last 15, 16 years trying to figure out a way to kind of come back here, and I haven't wanted to come to Comic-Con since um, without a reason to do it. Yeah. So one of the people I wanted to talk to was Mike Mignola, and he was very complimentary of the work, so that was awesome. But I'm like, I want to work. I want to do something with you. And he's just still like, mm, we'll, we'll see. get there. Mm. He's like everyone. But I kind of respect it because it kind of protects the brand in a sense. Yeah, I think so. But it's funny too because you were talking about yeah. this idea of like you have these, you have heroes, you have yeah, people yeah, that yeah. you're sort of building up to. Yeah. And and one of the things, uh, not to be like a shill or anything, yeah, but like yeah. the idea of of fans creating yeah. is a lot of what. Sideshow is about so that we vibe. One hundred percent. I mean, I always, I always think it's weird when when somebody claims that they're that or someone tries to project that they're not fans. Yeah, it's silly. Really? Like we're all here because we're a fan of something, and I've noticed that there are some artists that I've met that don't like to talk like that. Like I said, oh, I'm a big fan. Oh, so and so's here. I gotta go shake his hand. And then there's some people who will, you know, kind of give me the vibe of like that's that's not. The professional thing. To yeah. Do. I'm sorry. The two cool I love, for school stuff, I love saying yeah. hi to everybody, meeting everybody, shaking hands with everybody. I love it. Friendly guy. Yeah. Why not? For you somebody know, who mostly works in knives. Violent tools. Yeah. Right? I would say that, that it's yeah. this, thank God you're so friendly. Listen, and nice. we're complex. I want to talk about this uh, this piece because, um, like, what's the process for starting something? Like, how do you start it is what, is what I'm really getting at. Like, what's, what's the overlaying process? So of, my of... goal when I'm designing a piece is I want to make something that I would hang up. That's my, always my goal. Mm -hmm. and I, or I want to make something that if you could only buy one piece for your fandom, only pe one piece of art for your fandom, it would be substantial. Yeah. Right? So I always try to put the figure very large, very zoomed in, and then I think about in printmaking, what are the pros of the medium? There's some things that don't communicate as well in this medium, but one of the things that communicate very well is patterning, contrast, big, bold areas of ink. Uh, so when I'm designing something like Spider-Man, I'm thinking, well, there's the webbing, there's the texture of his suit, um, and, you know, so I'm always trying to create, you know, repetition in the patterns of the lines. Yeah, that, I, this can't be easy to get these little... Well, you have to plan it. You have to plan. Yeah. You have to think the same way you're drawing, and you're saying this is going to be the area of shadow. I'm going to, you know, whatever's black is something I don't carve. 
Okay. Right? So whatever is uh, light is what I do carve. And if I want to create a value of gray in between, right, I'll create a series of patterns. In this case, lines worked to create the gray, to create pattern, but also to, you know, convey the texture of his suit. And so <clears throat> it is funny because what you said just now where you say your plan yeah. is to create what is essentially like a centerpiece almost like Always a big that, piece yeah. and you're you're right in that the, the contrast on this is very big you have very dark on very light yeah. uh paper here um and that is this paper uh same, the same paper as lacta this, but... yeah so lacta it's a uh, type of paper that uh i purchased from uh nepal so in nepal they make this paper by hand um it's like i've seen video it's like farms where instead of rows of crops it's rows of screens like you would use to make a screen print Really? Right. So they, they create a mixture and they spread it onto the screens and then they come by and they just pull them off one at a time. And then you'll notice if you see a stack, they're not all perfect rectangles. They're not like really, some of them have weird indentations or they have like, you know, remnants of twigs or leaves or things like that. And to me, it's just more, uh, it lends more to the fact that this is handmade. And yeah, I mean, the whole this, process. This paper, it seems, it, it seems almost like the the perfection in it is the defects, almost Love the, it. the kind of like the very handmade yeah. feel to it, yeah. um, which is super rad. Yeah, I, I think I, the paper sometimes you know helps so much uh, when you get to see it in, in person, you get to touch it and and really get a, a sense of it. It gives it a, a different feel and a, and sensibility than almost any other print you yeah, get. Yeah, it's not like computer paper where no, they no. look like no piece is going to ever be the same. Nope. It's all... Some, some of them have l weird little tears on it. I have, some of yeah. them have to pull a branch off, a little twig, I should yeah, say. Yeah, I see there's little yeah. like, I mean, I don't know if you can tell here, but there's little like same tiny thing. little flecks and little pieces. There's a piece that you could just yeah. sometimes, pull it off. I'm not leave, going to. Go ahead, just tear it up. You want me to tear it up? No, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> you kind of just, just rip the whole thing and have it. That's, uh, yeah, I, I, it's gotta be stopped. I go Dude, nuts here. It's like yeah. seven, five hour energy so far today. Yeah, I'm just see what's down here. Uh, um, it's funny, yeah, that's from Nepal too, which is crazy. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, oh, well, that's what you expect when they have a weird flag. Right, so, yeah. Uh, two triangles, what kind of flag is that? It's well designed um, minimalism. I'm going to, I'm going to jump now from the paper sure. to another thing that we offer yeah. because uh, we have the print. This yes. thing sold out. Sold out. We made a hundred with Sideshow and they sold out. Thank you very, very much to everybody yeah. who picked that up. It was, it was so like awesome. a day. It, it was, was fast. so fast. So awesome. And we also offer this one, which is we did some on wood. Yeah, so Sideshow partnered with uh, Prince on Wood uh, to screen print this image onto a piece of wood. And that's the amazing thing about working with Sideshow is you get opportunities like that. I would love to have done something on my own, but I just don't have the time or, you know, to, to do both. And yeah. so working with a great company who has so many contacts and connections, that's amazing. Do I gotta you, get one from my house. Have you ever, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up, we'll yeah. get it out of here. Uh, have you ever done stuff on wood before? I used to was... carve the images out of wood directly. Really? Yeah, old school, that's real old school. Yeah, yeah. and the, the, you know, the cool thing about that is you have this nice piece that's carved in wood as a display in it, up to, to display in and it of itself, but for storage, it can be a little tr trickier. <laughs> And so, uh, and the linoleum and, and, will, and the will linoleum roll up really suits theory, right? my lifestyle. I'm a teacher, yeah. and so you know, linoleum you can kind of like pick it up and grab it, stick it in your car. It's, you know, it's actually more durable than it looks, and it's pliable, and I can you know stick it in you know a portfolio yeah. more easily. It's so linoleum. I, yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the stuff for kitchen floors. It's almost be good. exactly. It's gotta yes. be good. It's <laughs> exactly. gotta be. You should see my kitchen floors, by the way. They're beautiful. You all just carve them right in. It's all these Spider-Man. No barefoot days. No, you wouldn't want to have that. <laughs> or if so, put some ink on there yeah, and make something listen. work. Uh, I am uh, super stoked uh, to be able to have you on. I was oh, so glad you. to see that Thanks we so were going to be having a conversation. Uh, where can we find you? Uh, on on the internet, on the in the world. What's and your address? Everything. Where can we go to your you can house? always find me. Attack Peter anywhere. Okay. Attack, attack, Peter, attack Peter. At Attack Peter on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. AttackPeter.com is coming up and running soon. But uh, everything Attack Peter. Okay. Me up there. So you heard it, everybody. Yeah. Attack Peter. Do it. <laughs> attack. Oh, the nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't you don't want to do that? Uh, thank you so much. Too it was literal. a blast having you, you on. I'm it. so glad that we finally got to hang out. Thanks so much. And now the unframed and framed versions of that piece are unfortunately sold out. However, that wood print is still available, but won't be for long. So go get yours now. Uh, thanks for joining us, and don't forget to let your geek side show.